Yeah. But where does it start? Does it start here? Or does it start here? It starts here. So the clavicle is part of the appendicular. So the actual skeleton is the brain, the spine, and the rib cage. And then the appendicular is everything else. So the pelvic girdles, the shoulder girdle, and the upper extremity and the lower extremity. So what we're going to be talking about today is the pelvic girdle. I mean, I'm sorry, the shoulder girdle. So that's going to start with the clavicle. And then this is all part of the scapula. And then we have the humerus. So the shoulder girdle is going to involve three bones. We have the clavicle, the scapula, and the humerus. And then it's going to attach the upper limb to the skeleton, or to the axoskeleton. And then it's going to provide for attachment points, so the muscles are going to move the bones. So a scapula means a spade or a shovel. So I guess you could dig with this, right? Okay. So it has different landmarks on it, and you need to know. Some of these are more important because you're going to know them for palpation. So any of the things in the notes that have the little thumb mark on, you need to make sure you know those for palpation. So you have the superior border, the medial border, and the lateral border. And this would be the right. So this would be medial border, lateral border, and superior border. Okay. And then you have three angles. So you have the, actually I think that's not right on the slide there. You have, yeah, it's, it's got the angles are right on your notes, but it's not right on the slide. So it should be inferior angle, superior angle, and lateral angle. And then you have different fossa. And it's based on the spine of the scapula, which is right here. Okay. So you have the spine of the scapula. So what would you call this here? What's the word for above? Supra. Supraspinatus fossa. And then what would this be? Infraspinatus. Okay. And then the subscapular, which is here. Even though it's kind of in front, it's considered subscapular. And then this one right here. Right, so that's the glenoid fossa. That's the actual articular surface that articulates with the humerus. And then there's some other markings that are going to include the chromium. Sometimes it's called just the chromium by itself, or sometimes it's called the chromium process. So either a chromium or a chromium process. And then you have the coracoid process. And that means the beak. So that's this little beak looking thing right here. And then you have the suprascapular notch, which is right up here. Okay. And then you have the scapular spine. So like I mentioned before, that's what divides where the different fossa are. So what's this fossa right here then? Supraspinatus fossa. And what's this one? Infraspinatus. Subscapular. And then what's the other fossa? Okay. And then what's the angles of the scapula? Superior angle. Inferior. Inferior. And then what are the surfaces? Or the borders, I'm sorry. This would be the medial border. This would be the right scapula here. Or left, I'm sorry. The uh, medial border, lateral border, and superior border. So the reason why you need to know, the ones that you need to know for palpation is because those are going to be important for point location. The other ones you need to know because of origin insertion type stuff.
So again, here's just another view of it looking basically this way. And so you're looking at the glenoid cavity, what they're calling it in this case, or glenoid fossa. Then you have coracoid, and then the chromium, and then subscapular and supraspinous fossa. Those are the ones we just went over. So then you have the clavicle, which is called a little key. Right? So it's, it has a double curve to it. And then it lies across the superior part of the thoracic cage. That's what comes straight out from the sternum over towards the chromium, is the clavicle right here. And then you have two ends of it, and they're based, the name of the ends have to do with what other bone it attaches to. Okay? So on the sternal end, it's going to attach to the sternum. Right? So then what's it going to attach to on the other end? Chromium. And what bone is that part of? Scapula. Yeah. So a lot of muscles are going to attach for to it. And basically it's the clavicle is really the only bony joint that holds the whole shoulder to the actual spine or skeleton. Because this joint right here is the only bony joint, the true bony joint that attaches the whole shoulder girdle to the rest of the axial skeleton. And then you have the arm, or also called the brachium. So technically in anatomy, when you want, when you say arm, you're really only talking about from here to here. Okay, and then this is forearm. And then what do you call this all together? Upper extremity. Upper extremity, right. right. But then in the lower extremity, it's the other way around. The leg is down here, and the thigh is up here. This is the arm, and this is the leg, and this is the thigh, and this is the, the forearm. Well, this is called brachium, and this is antibrachium. So like I said before, it's like speaking a foreign language, you know, you just need to learn the words. If you have brachium, then you have antibrachium. And so then what is the humerus going to articulate with? What bones? Scapula up here, and then what about down here? Right, just in the ulna, right? All right, so then talking about the arm or the humerus or brachium, and then you have, we'll talk about proximal, which is going to be up here, and then distal is going to be down here. Okay? So you can have the head of the humerus, and then the anatomical and the surgical necks. And then you can have these two porosities, the greater and the lesser. The greater one is more lateral, and the lesser one is more medial. We'll be going over those for palpation because those are things you need to know for palpation of Okay, And those are going to be attachments for uh, rotator cuff muscles. Okay. And then there's also, between those tubercles, there's an intertubicular groove. And that's where the biceps tendon passes through. So that's going to be this part right here. We'll go over that with palpation. I mean, basically, if, you, if, you, if you're in an anatomical position like this, your biceps is going to run up like this. If you follow straight up here, you should be on the tendon. If you go one side and you feel a bony prominence, that's the lesser tuberosity. You go on the other side, that's the greater tuberosity. And then if you, you, can, if you go like this, you can feel you snap that tendon across there. Or you're going between the greater and the lesser tuberosities. And if you feel that rope thing going across, that's going to be the biceps tendon. All right, so, so you have the head, the anatomical and surgical max. Those you're not really going to copy. Okay. The le greater or lesser tubercles you will, and then the intertubicular group. All right. Then we we'll talked about the mid portion, where you have the deltoid process, which is where the deltoid muscle is going to attach here. And then the radial group, uh, yeah, the radial groove. The radial groove is not necessarily something you're really going to copy that much, but you can find the delta tuberosity if you follow where the curve of the delta ends right about here. It's going to be on the lateral side. And then you get to the distal part, 